Daniel Bartlett, Director of the Certification Programs at the MEF, the Metro Ethernet Forum. And I'm here with John Hawkins. I'm John Hawkins, Product Marketing Manager at Sienna Corporation and member of the Marketing Committee here at MEF. So, John, a lot of people are asking questions about e-access. What is e-access? E-access. Um, in the context of uh, CarriesNet 2.0, it is the newest service definition issued by the MEF that defines a, uh, especially a um, uh, wholesale uh, service that can be offered from one operator to another in order to do things like extend the operator's, uh, the buying operator's footprint into an area where he doesn't necessarily have coverage. So it holds a lot of promise for being, uh, for being a um, a horizon extender, if you will, for an operator uh, that wants to sell an end-to-end -end service to an enterprise. So if I understand correctly, e-access is a new service definition from the MEF that's designed to enable service providers to extend their footprint by buying uh, e-access service from uh, another service provider. That's correct. That is okay. correct. So the, the two categories of stakeholder here are going to be the buyers and the sellers? That's correct. And that's a big part of the value of e-access is defining that relationship um, between the buyer and the seller and setting those expectations correctly so that uh, buyers can be confident in what they are uh, buying um, uh, in terms of the wholesale relationship that exists there now. So that's a big part of it is, is bolstering confidence in, in terms of buyers, buyers and sellers in any market thrives on, on confidence between those buyers and sellers. So that's a big part of the, uh, of the value of, of e-access. Not only the technical aspects of what attributes and, and how the circuit will behave, but uh, that, uh, that element of, of fomenting the market uh, across the, uh, across the uh, operator space. So how, how would you categorize buyers? I mean, what, what sort of companies would be buyers and what sort of companies would be sellers? It, it, it will vary with, with uh, regions and with uh, particular uh, buyers and sellers' needs or, or requirements. But the, the example I would, I would see being quite common is a large operator with a global uh, offering which, who just, for whatever historical reasons, does not have regional coverage in a given country, a given metropolitan area. Uh, and therefore would like to engage with uh, another operator, potentially a smaller operator that has a regional footprint or regional offering uh, to, to buy uh, one of these uh, e-access services so that, 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 that the uh, um, buying operator can put together an end-to-end -end service for, uh, for his enterprise client, his enterprise customer. So let's take an example. Perhaps there's a, a company that has uh, offices in New York City and uh, they have a... Uh, a branch or a partner in um, some part of Cape Town, for example. So uh, the company, that, the service provider that's providing them with the, uh, with the carry Ethernet service, perhaps it's an e-line that they want between New York and uh, Cape Town. They don't have that footprint all the way. Perhaps they have it between New York and downtown Cape Town, and then they need it to the business park in, in, uh, outside Cape Town. Is exactly. that sort of... Uh, that's a great example. Uh, another possibility would be that the, the operator, the buying operator, has the submarine link but doesn't have access to either metropolitan area, doesn't have access to either the New York metropolitan area or the Cape Town metropolitan area. So those would be two access, e-access circuits that that operator would be interested in purchasing in order to put together the end-to-end -to -end, uh, end -end SLA that they want to write for that customer. Okay. So um, do you uh, see e-access as being a game changer? Potentially, yes, for this, for this reason that we were talking about, broadening the horizons of, of operators. It allows for a, a whole different level of creativity, I think, in supplying the needs of enterprises. Um, and it gets us back to the original intent of the MEF, which was to promote the adoption of Ethernet services on a global basis. So it, it really does get the MEF back to its root uh, raison d'etre uh, in, in uh, facilitating that adoption of Ethernet services. So for what you describe, um, this could be uh, uh, very, very relevant for literally hundreds of service providers, if not more, around the world. Absolutely. Uh, and th there are a lot of small service providers who would never have uh, the opportunity to supply the needs for a global enterprise, for instance. 
So it and now allows them to have a part of that uh, a part of that business, which is which is a game changer for them for sure. So uh, is this e access? Can it be run over any type of infrastructure? Absolutely, like all MEF specifications, the the mechanism whereby the service is uh, um, is delivered is not part of the specification. Uh, only the attributes and the behavior of the service are are specified. Um, so there are all sorts of creative ideas of how that might be delivered, both wireline, fiber, copper, uh, wireless are all possibilities. And I suspect that uh, the e-access sellers will come up with some very creative solutions in the in the years to come. Okay, a lot of uh, a lot of companies and service providers will be saying, "Hold on, I already sell uh, access Ethernet access. I uh, I sell." Uh, uh, perhaps it's over fiber, or I sell it over T1, or whatever, bonded copper. Um, what, what's different here? And, and that's true. That certainly happens today. Um, the, the difference here, the game changer here, is that now there is a specification for what those attributes and expectations can be on the part of the buyer and the seller. So not only can I buy my e-access service using our example in New York from provider seller uh, A, but I can buy uh, another e-access service from the seller in uh, Cape Town and have full expectations that those will behave in the same manner. So I don't have to have two separate negotiations, one with the seller in New York and one with the seller in, in uh, Cape Town. Those now become uniform, standardized. The analogy we always use is that when we ordered a, a TDM, standard TDM circuit, a T3 or a T1, DS3, depending on, on, uh, uh, on, on the requirements for bandwidth, those were well understood, well behaved. Uh, there didn't have to be a lot of one-on-one -on -one negotiations. There didn't have to be a lot of uh, pages and pages of memorandums of understanding of how this, behave, uh, how this uh, circuit would behave. We want to bring the same model into the Ethernet realm uh, and, and that the ordering process, the fulfillment process, uh, can can be eased and uh, facilitated with this uh, standardization of it. Okay, so dare I say it, T1 today is, is actually a very standard commodity type of local loop and where we're going with the access is actually a, a flexible, uh, from the point of view of bandwidth and uh, class of service and other capabilities that carry Ethernet offers, but essentially it's the next T1. That's correct. So we, we, we've added all of the good things of Ethernet. It's flexibility, uh, the ability to, uh, uh, to, to oversubscribe that link if I wish to, uh, that the T1 doesn't offer us. Uh, the, the, the sheer bandwidth capacity that the T1, of course, uh, runs out of at some point um, is what we want to add to that. But we want to keep the ease of understanding, of, of behavior, of attributes. Of the interaction between the Of the interaction the between, the exactly, exactly. So there are buyers and sellers out there, and they say, okay, this is interesting, what's the next step? Well, there are several things. I think the MEF website is probably your first, uh, first stop. There are a variety of uh, introductory uh, materials there that explain the service, explain the value proposition, explain the attributes that are captured in the spec. Of course, the specs themselves are, uh, are freely available on the MEF website. Uh, ultimately, we have certification uh, uh, programs, both at the equipment level, the service level, and at the professional level that will teach you uh, a whole lot more, uh, all that you ever would want to know about uh, the new service. But ultimately, you can pick up the phone, give us a call, and uh, uh, send us an email, and we will respond with, uh, with uh, lots of expertise that, that uh, roams the halls within MEF. That's an important point. The MEF is actually a non-profit organization that comprises over 200 of the leading carry Ethernet service providers and equipment vendors and other companies in the world. The expertise is here. Um, it's all done through uh, discussion and uh, development of technical specs. That's actually how eAccess was developed, um, marketed by the MEF, certified by the MEF. So we're very approachable. What you're saying is go check out the website, but ultimately, if you want to know more, just get in contact with us, myself, Daniel, with you, John, or anybody else at the MEF will be pleased to. Be happy to help, be right. happy to help. Wonderful, thank you very much. Very good. Thank you, John.